A good way to monitor the health of pigeons is to observe their droppings. As most fanciers clean their loft daily, simply observing the droppings during the cleaning process is a good way to monitor pigeon health over the 24 hours period. Many problems that affect running performance have subclinical signs. This means that racing form is affected before the pigeons actually start to appear sick. Changes in droppings usually occur one to two days before a sick pigeon starts to give us the impression that something is wrong. Observing and effectively managing abnormal changes in droppings goes a long way in avoiding a trend reversal in shape. The quality of pigeon droppings has always been considered an important test of general condition. The detailed study of causes and consequences deserves our attention because it, in fact, directly or indirectly encompasses most of our problems. It is quite obvious that the nutrition of an athlete subjected to hard efforts is a very important problem. But it is at least obvious that if the organism can only use what the food ration, in all its forms, brings to it, it can also only use what its intestine has let through. Which leads to this real biological law. The important thing is not what the pigeon eats but what it assimilates. The intestine is a very fragile organ and prolonged inflammation results in a thickening of the wall accompanied by a more or less significant degeneration of the mucous membrane and an identification of its power to filter nutrients, from the action of different digestive juices on the ration. When the filter is clogged, the excess water and some of the unassimilated nutrients are rejected by the droppings and this is diarrhea. On the other hand, inflammation causes thirst, which further increases diarrhea, while providing only part of the water needs for the body, which is dehydrated. This set of facts explains diarrhea, weight loss and the flesh becomes more or less blue. But this is not the only possible process for the onset of diarrhea. The kidneys remove a number of waste products and water from the blood. If the kidneys have lost part of their filtering power, as happens for example after poisoning by fertilizer, the body takes on water and the pigeon seems blown. The water that it cannot reject by the kidneys leads to poor assimilation of the water still in the intestine and it is also diarrhea. A liver in poor condition or irritated by poisoning or by trichomoniasis reacts on the one hand by producing an excess of bile, green diarrhea, on the other hand by poorly performing its multiple functions of detoxification, deamination, storage of glucose, etc., which very quickly affects the kidneys, also creating hepatonephritis. To all these possible causes, we will add the very simple one of inflammation of the mouth, esophagus and crop by a poison, by trichomonas, etc., this creates an intense thirst and this water has to come out. There too we have the appearance of diarrhea. Of course, the aspects of this diarrhea are multiple, according to the intensity of the thirst, according to the bile reactions, according to the microbial complications in the intestine. The study of the appearance of droppings is therefore very useful. Normal droppings are firm without being hard. The pigeon at rest frequently emits small droppings, the size of a bean, topped with a little white urine, because it is very loaded with white urals. The size of the droppings varies with the rate of emissions. All amateurs know the huge droppings of good brooders when they get up for the meal. The color also varies. If the ration is rich in black seeds, legumes, rapeseed, rape, etc., the droppings are bottle green or very brown. If the ration is rich in corn, wheat, barley, dairy, millet, rice, etc., the droppings are of a grayish yellow. When the pigeon has been kept on a diet, the droppings are very small and black because they contain a very high proportion of bile and very little food debris and in particular very little cellulose. They are very sticky on the finger but this is perfectly normal. Similarly when a pigeon has been kept, for one reason or another, on its thirst for a long time and it drinks to satiety, it throws up diarrheal droppings. The passage of water through the digestive tract is very fast and one should not be surprised by the temporary diarrhea of a pigeon returning from a long distance competition in hot weather, for example. Diarrheal droppings can be homogeneous or black. 
it is homogeneous when there is dilution of the fecal mass in excess water in the intestine. The transit of water is then relatively slow over the entire length of the intestine, hence this homogeneous mixture. This is what we see each time there is an intestinal infection with fermentation. A microbe grows in the intestine, usually on wounds caused by parasites, trichomonas ulcers, capillary worms, very serious coccidiosis at their most advanced stage. This is especially seen in young pigeons. More rarely on adult pigeons which are otherwise very diminished. Often this is accompanied by an overabundant emission of bile, hence the oily, green or brown droppings typical of intestinal trichomonosis and capillaceous hair worms. Inhomogeneous droppings are those where the intestinal transit is fast and often even too fast. The irritated intestine has violent, frequent contractions, often even painful, which make the pigeons stampede, this can be heard very well at night, and emits the fecal mass in the middle of a puddle of water. This is the case for most coccidioses, we know the jets emitted all around the field by affected youngsters from their first day. Finally, the crunchy droppings very rich in urates of certain paratyphoids, the light colored droppings, probably due to the blockage of bile production by the larvae migrating through the liver, when there are ascariadia worms, the droppings bloody, uncommon, when there is hemorrhage from the terminal part of the bowel. Before visiting the vet, you can improve the condition of the pigeons based on the following recommendations. First recommendation, if the pigeons generally feel normal and are only worried about indigestion, then you should have them drink a weak solution of potassium permanganate and review their diet. The introduction of electrolytes is also an important stage of treatment, because dehydration of the body threatens death. Second recommendation, pigeons should only be given fresh food and water. The water should be boiled. Third recommendation, as for intestinal problems such as diarrhea appear, immediately give time tea to your pigeons to replace their drinking water. In the case if the nature of the diarrhea is infectious, antibiotics will be required, most often streptomycin, teramycin and tetracycline are prescribed for 5 to 7 days in a dosage according to the instructions. Fourth recommendation, as for internal parasites, coccidia, as well as to make our pigeons more resistant to diseases, we can give it in regular cures throughout the year. It is enough to squeeze the equivalent of a small clove of pure garlic with 2.5 liters of water. During the racing season, you can give garlic to your pigeons twice a month for two to three days. Last recommendation, in case of intestinal disorders, before resorting to conventional medical treatments, it may be interesting to treat your pigeons with turmeric powder. Here's how to do it, moisten a kilo of seeds with a little lemon juice or better still garlic oil and mix in a good tablespoon of turmeric powder. This mixture should be distributed for 3 to 5 days. In conclusion, excrement gives us very valuable information about the health of the pigeon. It is useful and important to look at them every day. When you notice anything abnormal, do not do blind cures but consult a competent veterinarian.